welcome to St. Thomas's Episcopal Church this morning, and a special welcome to you if you are new. First of all, we have thanks for the Reverend Jim Wheeler, who is leading our worship today. Our entrance hymn is found in your um, bulletin and also in the blue hymnal, page number 488. Please rise as you are able and join us for the hymn. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. supplications of your people, and in our time grant us the peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
is this even for today's scripture lesson? From our opening lesson, we hear the story of the calling of Jeremiah to be a prophet of the Lord. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Oh, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We'll read this psalm responsibly. It's printed in your bulletin, Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked. From the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God. My confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always with you. In the epistle lesson for today, Paul continues his discussion of spiritual gifts by placing them all within the context of the greatest gift of love. A reading from 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue in Nazareth. Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is this not Joseph's son? My one went with the four, four yeah. but thank you. <laughs> is this not Jesus, Joseph's son? 
He said to them, doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you do at Capernaum. And he said, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow in Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. That the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite songs from a relatively obscure songwriter, Pierce Pettis, talks about love much like Paul does in 1 Corinthians 13. The song is called That Kind of Love. Can't be bought or sold or faked, that kind of love. It always gives itself away, that kind of love. It's wiser than the wisest sage. Its innocence makes me ashamed till I'm not sure that I can take that kind of love. Pride and hatred cannot stand that kind of love. Greater love hath no man that kind of love. It won't be kept unto itself. It spreads its charm. It casts its spell till no one's safe this side of hell from that kind of love. Love rejected and ignored Held in chains behind closed doors, stuff of legend and of song, and deep down everybody longs for that kind of love, all oh, that kind of love. Some people never know that kind of love, though it only takes a child to show that kind of love. Widows smile and a strong man weep, and little ones play at its feet. The deaf can hear, the blind can see, that kind of love. Love triumphant, love on fire, love that humbles and inspires, love that does not hesitate, no conditions, no restraint, that kind of love. Oh, that kind of love. How could anyone deny that kind of love when every heart is measured by that kind of love? Even stars fall from the sky. Everything will fall in time except those things that cannot die. That kind of love. Oh, may you be remembered by that kind of love. The beautiful poetic words of 1 Corinthians 13, most often associated, I think, with weddings, don't come to us out of a wedding planner, nor from a book of poetry or inspirational sayings. Instead, the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 are found in the middle of his letter to the Corinthians, which was meant to deal 
the challenges to a divided community about the right way to live. When you read through first and second, the first and second letters to the Corinthians, you realize what a cantankerous community Paul was dealing with. Chloe's people reported to Paul that there were all sorts of quarrels among them. Of course, he was away from them when he wrote the letter, and the mail was kind of slow, it was actually delivered in person. The Chloe people were those who came to Paul to deliver their questions and their problems. And so his letter's writing back to them about all of that. Chloe's people reported to Paul that there were all sorts of quarrels among them. Some people aligned with Paul, others with Apollos, others with Peter. Some members had filed a lawsuit against other members. There, were, there was competition between members. There was even sexual immorality. It's obvious from Paul's letter that he tries, where he tries to sort them out, that the Corinthian community just didn't have it together. When they gathered for a supper, those who came first just sat down and ate. They didn't wait for anyone else. And some didn't even get enough to eat. And when they came together for worship, they all spoke at once. All those things which Paul tells them that love is not is exactly the way they were behaving. They were envious, boastful, arrogant, rude, insisting on their own way, irritable, rejoicing in the wrong. They were keeping score. They were like a noisy, clanging cymbal. Although they were very proud of their spiritual gifts and ecstatic experiences, they failed to show love for one another. In the Greek language in which the New Testament is written, there are several different words that we translate as love. Eros represents sexual love, of passion, longing, desire. The meaning of love we so often hear about in popular songs and movies. Philia, from which we get the word Philadelphia, is brotherly or sisterly love. That speaks of the affection and commitment between, among family members and close friends. Storge means the warm feeling of tenderness, the good feelings you get from a pat on the back or a warm hug. Agape. Agape is the Greek word used here and throughout the New Testament for God's love for us, our love for God, and the love Jesus tells us to have for our neighbor. The New Testament writers purposely chose uh, a rather neutral and frequently used word in the Greek language for love, which would express an entirely new experience of love in Jesus Christ. God. That kind of love, agape, is what Paul tells us the Corinthians is the still better way that Christ in Christ they ought to live. Look what Paul says love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things love never ends love is hard work it takes effort and will and attention and energy to be patient when someone is driving you to the point of exasperation to be kind when you're in a bad mood to bear all kinds of difficult things, to believe and hope against all odds and obstacles, to endure pain and hurt and hardship. It's hard to rejoice in the truth, especially when we discover we're, we were the one that was in the wrong. Paul describes love as an attitude. Love's a positive, wonderful attitude of caring for others of putting the other first, ahead of one's own self. 
Paul is inviting us to take on that attitude of love. On the negative side, Paul tells us what the attitude of love is not. Love is not envious. Love is not boastful, nor conceited, nor rude, nor selfish, nor quick to take offense. Love does not keep score of wrongs or gloat. Notice how each of these negative attitudes about what love is not are about feeding one's own ego. Love does not mean putting myself first. My ego, my pride and vanity, always get in the way of love. And love means putting on Christ, putting on the life of love, the way of Christ. As Paul later wrote to the Philippians in the second chapter, verses 5 through 8, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So putting on Jesus' attitude means following his words to love not only our neighbors, but even our enemies, and to pray for those who persecute us. Jesus' attitude of love teaches us to love even those who hurt us. It's also an attitude of forgiveness. We who have been forgiven so much by Jesus should be forgiving of others. Putting on the attitude of Christ means that we put on Jesus, his attitude of love and sacrifice. This tempers all our other attitudes. It is primary. That attitude of love is not based on feelings. We don't have to feel loving to be loving, to act lovingly. We don't have to like someone to love that person. We needn't worry whether or not we have pure and selfless motives as long as we act in charity and love towards our neighbor. Love is an action, a verb, an attitude. It's something that we will to do. So what's the good news in loving, as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13? I think there are essentially two pieces of good news here. The first is that, the first is assumed. We are loved. We are loved. It's only out of the wondrous love we have received from Jesus that we're enabled and empowered to love others. Love because he first loved us. We are first the beloved before we take on and are called to the hard task of loving as Christ loves us. The second piece of good news is that love transforms the lover. Love transforms the lover even more than it trans even more than being beloved. To love another changes us. It transforms our attitude towards those who are different from us or who are difficult to love. The more we act loving, the more we feel love. Loving others helps transform us from the inside out. Paul tells us one further thing. No matter how much knowledge we have, no matter how many spiritual gifts, no matter how accomplished we may be, at best, those things are but a dim reflection, like that distorted image of a mirror in a funhouse, in comparison to what God has in store. But love, God's great love for us, our love for God, our love for one another, that's the real thing. In love, we share the very reality and the very heart of God. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love is a tall order. But at the same time, it's an invitation to put on Jesus, 
to live at the very heart of God's kingdom. Or as from the words of one of my favorite songs, every heart is measured by that kind of love. I invite you to stand as you are able, and for those watching online, for all of us to affirm together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy catholic church. That we all may be one. And that every member of the church may truly become the church. That your name may be glorified by all people. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That they may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any disease or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Let, Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints and who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially Norma, Diane, Thomas family, Dana's family, Tommy, Shannon, Ryan. Martha, Ashley, Barb, Bill, Brenda, Ruth, Don, Jill, Joseph, Louise, Marsha, Maggie, Mary, Maureen, Robert, Ron, Sammy, Nancy, Austin, Gayla family, Rosemary, Ralph, Angela, Casey, Tony, Amanda, Marilyn, Sylvia, Sally, Jeff, and Marilyn. Marston. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. In each other, the peace of God. It's in more. Listen, what do you Let us with gladness present the offering of our life and labor to the Lord.
to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you. This is my blood, which is given for you, which was shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, we proclaim, we proclaim his, his resurrection, we, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, 
presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray your gracious God to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ with his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Thomas and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. for the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, 
to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you all. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. We only have a couple of them this wintry morning here in uh, Bethel. Um, first of all, today is the last day that we will have a 10 a.m. hybrid service with our partner, St. Paul. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure you tune in at 10 a.m. There'll be a special thanks that we will give to St. Paul and that they will give to us for our wonderful partnership and ministry that we've had during this COVID season. It's really been a blessing to both congregations and we hope that you will be part of that service at 10 a.m. online. Uh, we will be moving to one 9 a.m. service each week here at St. Thomas's. We will live stream it on our Facebook page, but we will also be meeting here in person. So starting next week, 9 a.m. only. Today is a special day because it is our annual parish meeting. Today, that is at noon, starting at 12 o'clock today on Zoom only. So the no, no meeting in person, just on Zoom. And you need to get the link for, for the Zoom by 11 a.m. today from Dawn Fawcett. So either talk to her or email her dawnfaw at aol.com before 11 o'clock so that you can get the link to that. If you are a voting member of St. Thomas's Parish, it is important that you attend that meeting. So please be there. We look forward to seeing you on Zoom at noon. Those are our announcements for today. Our hymn. Our closing hymn is on uh, in the hymnal, uh, sorry, in the um, bulletin today. Please rise as you are able for our hymn. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.